Okay, let's talk about high set mathematics. So if you're watching this video, I assume you are preparing for the high set. And the high set is basically an alternative to the GED exam. So if you're located in uh, one of those states that offers the high set, it's effectively an alternative to taking the GED. And all these changes came around about 2013, 2014, um, uh, where the GED changed, okay? Some states offered uh, the high set and or task. It all depends on what state you're in, but by far the GED is the, the oldest test in terms of high school equivalency. That's, that, that thing has been around for a good 70 uh, years or so. <laughs> but um, whether you're taking a GED, high set, or task the, these days, you're still going to have to be very strong in high school level mathematics, and they're pretty much the same in terms of what they're testing. So what we're going to do here is take a look at the concept of real numbers, we'll take a uh, quick um, look at one or two practice problems, and this is going to help obviously increase your score because real numbers, and I'm going to explain what those are. Uh, you may not be familiar with the term real numbers, but when you see them, you'll see, oh, okay, I know what they are. But effectively, what we're talking about is positive and negative numbers. So we'll take a look at a couple quick practice problems there. But before we get going, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tab of Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over several, several years, I've constructed many online math courses to include a high set math prep course. Very, very comprehensive, very successful. I'm going to leave the link to that in a description of this video. So if you um, need, you know, a lot more help preparing for high set math. Um, you'll definitely uh, want to check out my course. So with that being said, let's get into this uh, concept of real numbers. So what real numbers are is, let's just take a look at a number line, okay? So when we look at a number line, we have zero in the middle, and then we start counting to the right, numbers start increasing. So we have like one, two, three, on and on, uh, so forth, right? So numbers increase, uh, to the right of zero, but as we go to the left of zero, okay, we have other type of numbers. We have negative numbers. We have negative one, negative two, negative three, and then it just keeps going now on and on and on, right? So as numbers go further and further to the left of zero, they become less of value. So uh, let's just take a look at this real quick. So what is what has a greater value, zero or negative one? What is a larger uh, number. Okay. Now, hopefully you said, oh, it's uh, zero. Okay. And you would be correct. Okay. It's very much like when I teach the concept of real numbers, I like to use this uh, idea of money, like debt, right? So let's just, instead of a, a negative one, let's say we had negative $100. Okay. Would you want to see your bank account uh, if you had the choice, <laughs> would you want to see negative 100 in bank account, bank account, or would you want to see zero dollars? Okay, what scenario would you rather have? Would you rather have negative 100 or zero? So hopefully, most of you out there are saying, no, I, I would like to have zero. The, having no money is better. You actually have more money than a person that has negative 100 dollars, because this means hey, I have no money plus I have $100 in debt. <laughs> so you have $100 in debt and no money. Uh, I'd rather just like have no money with no debt, right? So uh, this concept of positive and negative numbers and what they represent, it's all part of real numbers. Now, let's take a look at this number line. Here we have what we call, these are these negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three. We uh, refer to these as what? integers okay these are called integer values it's not really critical if you remember what that name is but not but uh, these are just whole numbers right we have positive and negative whole numbers in zero which make up the integers but in between zero and one right here we have what we have fractions we have one fourth we have three fourths okay which you can write as a decimal point seven five so on a number line, you have fractions and decimals, both positive and negative, all through here. Okay, so all these numbers that are on, on this entire number line are called the uh, the set of real numbers, and you're going to have to uh, know how to work with them. 
In other words, conceptually, uh, in terms of what they mean, okay, in other words, like this example with uh, debt being a negative number, okay, here's another quick example of negative values. So here's the ground. Let's say I have a tree right here, da, 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 and I have a hole right here, okay, in the ground. If this tree is 100 feet, okay, then the, the, being on the ground is zero feet. Being down here in this hole might be like negative 20 feet. Okay, so these are the concepts of how real numbers, positive and negative numbers, apply in the real world, hence the name real numbers. Okay, but let's get down to um, some more kind of direct math skills that you're going to need to uh, know uh, um, to do really, really well on the high set. Okay, and that is you're going to have to be able to work with positive and negative numbers. In other words, you're going to be able to ha uh, have to do uh, basic math operations. You're going to have to be able to add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Okay, so let's just do a couple quick uh, problems here, real basic stuff. Uh, let me go ahead and just write this here. 5 plus negative 8. What is that equal to? And let's see, negative 3 times a negative 2. Two. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna turn this in uh, video into a full lesson on real number. Although I could, um, there's a lot to to know here, a lot to master, uh, and I could use instead. These are nice whole numbers, nice integer values. I could have put fractions in there, but let's just let's just take these two problems and let's see if you can uh, remember how to handle. Uh, how to work with positive and negative numbers. Okay, so if you think I could do these uh, two problems, go ahead and pause the video. All right, so let's kind of get to this. All right, so 5 plus negative 8 is what? So hopefully you said negative 3, okay, and you would be correct. Now let's just think about when you're adding or subtracting positive and negative numbers. I always like to um, have students think of these concepts in terms of money. So if you have a positive value, that's like having money. If you have a negative value, that's like having debt, all right? So here you can kind of interpret this of, hey, I have $5 in my pocket, but I owe this person that just came up to me $8, okay? So if I have $5 to my name, but I owe $8, well, what's my true financial situation, right? Well, <laughs> if I pay this person $5, I still owe them three, okay? So you're still, technically, you're still $3 in debt, okay? So that's one good kind of a model to think of in terms of adding or subtracting um, a positive and negative numbers. But when we're multiplying and dividing positive and negative numbers, here you just have to kind of remember the basic rule, okay? If the signs are the same, in other words, if you are if you have a negative, uh, a negative or negative or a positive and positive, if the signs are the same, so here I have a negative and negative, so they're the same, your answer is going to be positive. So you just multiply. 3 times 2 is 6. Because the signs are the same, it's positive 6. Now let's take a look at an example. Let's say I had a positive 3 times a negative 4. Are the signs the same or different? They're different. So in that case, uh, if the signs are different, the answer is going to always be negative. So this would be negative 12. So the rules for multiplication, okay, is the same as division. So this is the rule for multiplication and division, just one I just described. And then when we're adding or subtracting, you kind of want to use, uh, it gets a little bit more difficult, okay? It's not, it's not difficult, but it, students sometimes, you know, confuse this. But I like to kind of use the money model there. But all this, what I'm uh, going through, is not designed to be like a full lesson. It's just a quick tutorial uh, on real numbers, and you're going to have to know a lot about real numbers in terms of be able to add uh, positive and negative fractions, mixed numbers, integers, and this is not even getting into algebra yet, okay? We're just dealing with with numbers uh, uh, and arithmetic. So again, uh, you know, the high set is covering a lot of mathematics, all right? Uh, but nothing that you can't handle. Believe me when I tell you, you can pass the high set math section um, uh, irrespective of your age, how many years you've been out of school, or how well you have done in math. But let's go ahead and wrap up this video. Um, again, um, 
I'm going to leave a link to my high set math prep course in the description of this video. It will help you tremendously. Uh, if you're new to my YouTube channel, okay, hopefully consider subscribing. I'm posting math videos all the time. I already have hundreds of videos on my YouTube channel that can help you out uh, prepare for the high set. So if you like my teaching style, you can go and check out uh, a lot of the videos on my channel right now. If you like this video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. Um, uh, are you in a, a state that offers uh, both the GED and uh, the high set? If so, why are you taking the high set versus the GED? Just um, any feedback will be good feedback. Uh, maybe how many years have you been out of school? Uh, I've worked with people uh, that have taken my high set math prep course. I've been out of school 40 years, okay? <laughs> and they could do well. I, I always like to uh, talk to you uh, folks out there, whether you're taking the GED, the task, the high center, uh, uh, you're kind of coming back in uh, to, uh, you know, um, take care of your education, take care of that part of your life, which is excellent. Don't reference your ability to learn math, if you, especially if you struggled with math if 30 years ago, 20 years ago, and you think back, you're like, I was terrible, I'm no good in math. Forget that. You're not even that same person anymore, okay? If you dwell on your fear of math, you will, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. You're not going to do well in math. I'm just telling you right now, you're not the same person uh, that you were in school. Clearly, uh, just by virtue of you taking high school equivalency, something derailed for your education early on, okay? Um, whether it was your fault or not, okay? You weren't at your top focus, okay? back in those days. Now you're an adult, you're motivated and you're focused. But I will say this much, do not try to uh, um, do the minimum amount to prepare for the high set. You have to really work hard and, and, and be committed, okay? So if you try to do the minimum amount and, and not really put in the full effort, you're gonna if you're effectively making the same mistakes that you made back in your high school years, okay? Maybe in a different way, but you, there's only one way to learn math, and that is to kind of like buckle down and get with a good teacher, a good program, and just start building your math skills up. And over time, you will accumulate enough math, enough math skills uh, where you have a real, you know, solid foundation in mathematics so you could build upon. So if you do well in the high set, not only are you going to pass the high set, but you know, you'll be ready to uh, move on to college mathematics, et cetera, or whatever other opportunities might interest you. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best on the high set math section. And thank you for your time and have a great day.